Today we're going to talk about some hands that I see get misplayed quite a bit, and today we're going to tell you why. All right, but first off, welcome back to the channel. This is A1 Blackjack, and you can see in front of me I have five of my blue basic strategy flashcards, as well as five of my deviation flashcards um, in here in red. All right, and you'll also notice that these are the same situations on each. For example, this is a nine versus the dealers two, and this is a nine versus the dealers two. Okay, and that's the same for all five of those situations. So. In blue here, these are gonna be the basic strategy, which means uh, for kind of more or less, you might say that that's what you would do if the count was zero. Now there's a little bit more to it than that, but for kind of layman's terms, we'll just say that that's what basic strategy is, is that when the count is zero, um, your basic strategy chart is gonna tell you which hands to play and exactly how you should play those hands. So for example, if you had a nine versus a dealer's two, the correct decision here, if the count is, um, you know, it hasn't changed at all, if it's just zero, would be to hit this hand, right? In fact, if I flip this one over, that's what it says. Nine versus the dealer's two is to hit. However, this one gets misplayed quite a bit because there is what's called a deviation to this, which means that if the count, if you're, a, if you're counting cards, if you're a card counter, right, and you realize that the count goes up enough, usually, or sometimes for some of these it's down enough, then you want to deviate or change what this decision is. So instead of hitting, you would actually double down, all right? You're gonna double down um, when this count gets to be a plus one or higher for the true count. Now, if you don't know the difference between a running count and a true count, that's gonna be a topic for another video. I have videos on that, but this is misplayed quite a bit because at a certain point, you will not hit anymore. You're gonna actually double down. That's gonna be at a true count of plus one or higher. And that's what this hand says. See, the basic strategy is gonna be at the top here. That's normally gonna be a hit, which matches this one, which is good and then you're gonna double down at a plus one or higher. So we're gonna go through the other four of these and kind of explain when the situation is that you would change from basic strategy to do what the deviation is. And then I'm gonna tell you more about these cards here at the end. So what about this next one? It's a 15 versus a dealer's 10. A 15 versus a dealer's 10 is normally gonna be a hit, all right? And if I flip this over, you'll see that it says that. And it also says at the bottom that if surrender is available, you'll wanna do that no matter what. Okay, and uh, with that, I, I put that it's gonna normally be a hit because surrender is kind of a rule that's maybe not as common, especially when you're just starting out and you're at the lower limits tables with you know, 25 and $50 minimums. But otherwise, if you go to the deviation, instead of hitting this all the time, if the true count rises to be a plus four or higher, you are going to stand, okay? It is more likely uh, that you would bust your hand at that point, and so it's gonna be uh, better for you to stand in that situation. Oops, and there it is. So normally, again, that top one should match up with this. It's gonna be a hit for basic strategy, but you're gonna stand at a true count of plus four or higher. All right, what about this next one? If I flip this over, this is gonna be a 16 versus a dealer's 10. Normally, this is gonna also be a hit, okay? And so basic strategy should say to hit here. However, at any positive running count, so as soon as you take a card out of the deck here, let's get a positive one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Those, they're all high cards. Come on, there we go. All right, so if I take out a positive, if this was the first card out of the deck and then the count was positive after that, you would end up with a 16 versus a 10 and the count was positive. Okay, you probably need more than just a five, but uh, you would deviate by standing on a 16 versus a 10. So again, here it says that this would be a hit normally using basic strategy, but you're going to stand at a true count, or not a true count, sorry, this is one of the only ones that does a running count, a running count of any positive running count. All right, two more here. What about a 10 versus a 10? A 10 versus a 10 is normally gonna be a hit. It is tempting to double that down, but this is just gonna be a hit. However, you can double this one down if the true count gets to be plus four or higher. So if I flip this over, Again, the hit should match up there. You will double down at a true count of plus four or higher. And then the last one that I have is if you have a pair of tens versus a dealer six. A pair of tens versus a dealer six is gonna be to stand on this. And down here below it says to never split tens. However, there's actually a deviation for that. Even though uh, there's, I think there's even a YouTube channel called Never Split Tens, but uh, Never Split Tens is basic strategy. You can actually split those tens at a plus four or higher. But if you zoom in on this here, 
In the bottom it says most card counters don't split tenths. It's going to be one of the easiest way for the pit boss to realize that you are a card counter because there's only two types of people that split tens. Idiots and card counters, okay? So if you've been playing pretty well up until then, you're probably not an idiot. So only idiots and card counters split tens. And if you're playing okay, you're probably going to be pegged as a card counter. So that said, split those at your own risk, but it is okay to not deviate and just stand all the time um, on a pair of tents. Now, if I flip these back over here, um, again, the blue ones, I flipped over first. These are going to be my basic strategy flashcards. Some of you have purchased this. Um, I had someone sent me a picture of one that they uh, pr they printed out and they laminated it and it looks super fancy. All right, mine aren't that fancy. It's just cardboard or uh, card stock, I should say. But these are available to purchase. I'll put a link down below of this video in the pinned comment if you would like to purchase either of these two decks. Um, I think uh, normally they go for about 15 bucks. Sometimes I run some deals on uh, my little Patreon store. Again, you don't have to be a member of the Patreon to buy them, but uh, that's where they are being sold. So if you want either of these, uh, you can have them. Again, this is just part of the deck. If I pull out the full decks here, I think there's 63 cards of each. So this one... I took out uh, those five and I had the other ones. This is on a little bit of a thicker piece of paper. And this one is more just uh, card stock there. So anyway, 63 of each of the deviations as well as the basic strategy flashcards. Um, they are available as a downloadable PDF. So you don't have to wait for shipping. You can get those today if you want them. Anyway, hopefully you like this video. That's why some of these are so hard to play because they have deviations. Until next time, this is A1 Blackjack.